Well, actually, we status is very deplorable. We know they get no assistance from the government. Victor Ngigba Dia, National Secretary General of the World Wounded and Amputees, speaking on their current situation in the country. The World Wounded and Amputees were the primary victims of the 11 years long civil war in Sierra Leone that are still living with scars, emotional trauma from the heinous crimes meted against them. As part of the country's reconciliation process, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission POFA series of recommendations to address in their plight. 21 years since the end of the war, how has life been for them? The operation they were talking about, we did not see anything unless the 6 million that was given to us. Out of that 6 million, my children had to go to school and my husband is not working and all the challenges on me. All that was promised to us as amputees, we did not see. Our children want to go to school. How can they? Because we cannot afford due to our condition. We are just living by the grace of God. Valora Edwin was part of the TRC working group representing civil society organizations that put together some of the recommendations to address challenges of war wounded and amputees. She speaks on the reparation process proposed by the TRC. When the TRC recommendations were being developed, there was a special committee on reparations, of which I was also a part, and um, it was recommended that NAXA, the National Commission for Social Action, should manage the affairs of, um, of victims or survivors and their dependents of the conflict. And these survivors were categorized as um, amputees, war wounded, um, victims of sexual violence. I think I could recall the three. They were like five of them, and these were um, uh, nationally accepted. Volume 2, Chapter 3, Paragraph 484 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report recommended measures that deal with the needs of victims in health pension, education, skills training, and microcredits, among others. But how challenging has implementation of these recommendations been? Valora Edwin again. But one of the key challenges that started even then was the representation, or let me say even commitment of the MDs. Um, so today, it would be John. The next meeting, it's Peter. So they didn't have a consistent uh, or permanent representative that could follow up and um, give um, commitment on behalf of the MD. And when another personnel was representing the same agency, they had no clue what they were coming in for, what previous discussions had been. So that was where the initial problem started. But what we have lacked and, and what the um, TLC recommendation had described was to have developed a systematic approach and you would have sort of mainstreamed them. So for example, if you're talking about the free healthcare system, it is it recommended that the war wounded could be part of that free healthcare, which is not the case. They were also to have access to free education, um, also they are dependent. So we are only having free quality education now, where everyone um, benefits from that, but that's, we are now 20 years on. What was the reparation package given to these victims? Victor Ngigba, National Secretary General of the War Wounded and Amputees, explains. According to the TRC recommendation, we face a government... According to TRC recommendation, we thought government will support us. My fellow Salonians, 20 years down, both past and present government, had forgotten about us. To fool us, the past government brought reparation and amputees. We are given six million for the rest of our lives. For us, the war wounded, we only received three million loans. We waited. Chap chap, where then damage, we will not be able to do hard work again, then you will get three million. But how can these challenges be addressed? They need to um, restructure, um, they need to develop a more comprehensive approach to the identified uh, survivors of the war. We are all the survivors, but you have these categories that were identified in the TLC report. And then they need to build on existing systems and processes to bring them on board. So, for example, we have the free health care. We have a free health care system. What is required is to add them in as beneficiaries. 
As per the recommendation, the National Commission for Social Action, NAXA, was mandated to coordinate the reparation process. It was envisaged that NAXA, as the implementing body entrusted with governing the Special Fund for War Victims, will ensure the decentralization of programs is in conjunction with different ministries. However, effort to reach out to the Commission to speak on the reparation process was unsuccessful, but the space is still open for them to respond. With support from the Media Reform Coordinating Group through the African Transitional Justice Legacy Fund, Ronald Joe Moruvia, AYV News, Freetown.